In this edition of City News, we'll show you why the Hawthorne Police Department gathered at a local McDonald's. Also find out what improvements are coming soon to the city. Plus see how one South Bay organization is ensuring jobs to residents and honoring them along the way. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Welcome to City News. I'm Jennifer Murillo. Coffee with the Cop, a program that was started by the Hawthorne Police Department, is now recognized nationally. We take you to the McDonald's on Hendry and Rosecrans Avenue to show you where it all began. In 2011, the Hawthorne Police Department came up with an idea to bridge the gap between the police and the community. That same year, the program Coffee with the Cop was born. Who would have thought that five years ago, you know, now we'd be looking at nine countries and four languages for this program that started here in Hawthorne. This is a way for them to actually sit down with a police officer on a casual basis and express their concerns. No pressure, there's no action being taken, there's no case being, being formed. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. The police officers here are very receptive, they're very friendly, um, you know, they're very respectful, and I think that makes people feel comfortable um, opening up and talking about whatever, whatever it may be, whatever's on their mind. Abnormal activity, I guess. Right. Yeah, so. But you know what, that's when you call us. Because yeah. they, like I said, it's that little bit of information. I guess it's been more burglaries than robberies. And that's usually what it is. This simple yet effective program quickly took off as other departments also saw a need to break down barriers. Having officers just talk to people on a regular, non-confrontational basis is key. That's where trust is built, that's where good communication comes in, and it's essential to, to maintaining our society and, and the fabric of, of what it's built on. It's worth it to come and meet them and see, hey, they have the same concerns, they want everything to go smoothly in town, just like we as citizens do. They don't want conflict. They want safe, happy, thriving communities, just like we do. So at the end of the day, once they remove their uniform, their brothers, their fathers, their husbands, you know, their mentors, they're people just like you and I, um, and they're here to do a job. This year, the program expanded even further as October 7th became the nationally recognized Coffee with the Cop Day. To have something that's now recognized on a national scale that literally was created and born here is, is very prideful. It shows that no matter how small or how big you are as a city, um, there's always a diamond in the rough and that's what our Hawthorne Police Department was. HPD celebrated this day in the same place where it all started. Over 500 Coffee with a Cop events were being held nationwide and both Chicago and the New York Police Department were holding their first. It worked so well that people in Washington, D.C. took notice and allowed us the path that you now see, that uh, police departments everywhere can now tap into this and use it for their own community. It's just a great feeling. You could feel it in the um, atmosphere that uh, the spirit here is one of uh, gratitude and one of unity. Over the years, it's grown, and we even have customers coming in saying, hey, when are you going to do the next coffee with a cop? So it's really progressed. Sergeant Chris Cognac said that even though the program is held internationally, he hopes that it will continue to expand to more countries. To learn more about this program, go to www.coffeewiththecop.com. Two groundbreaking ceremonies were held in Hawthorne that initiated construction to improve the city. Evan Orani has a story. October 10th was a busy Monday for the city as two building projects officially broke ground in Hawthorne. The first project brought out various city leaders, including Mayor Alex Vargas, to Marine Avenue, where a road improvement project will start. What this project does, it reduces the congestion here at the intersection of Marine and Aviation, adds lanes, adds traffic signals, and uh, there's repavement and the striping is redone in a more efficient manner just to maximize the ability flow that goes through the intersection. The project is funded through grant money from Measure M and Proposition C, both created to help improve transportation in Los Angeles County. It's improvements not just to our city, but the South Bay and Los Angeles County throughout. 
And so it's always good to know that we have a resource of sorts and we have collaborations between other neighboring cities that ultimately can see the benefits as well. And I want to make sure that um, Hawthorne always applies for projects and make sure that we, we are um, definitely represented when it comes to getting funding. Another groundbreaking came later that day as the Memorial Park playground equipment was removed to start the construction of a new playground. The new equipment includes accessibility for Americans with disabilities and the removal of sand and wood chips to be replaced with a rubberized mat. Developer impact fees that ultimately are going to help in our community is going towards a good cause and it's to our children. It's to assure that the benefits to them is one of safety and one that is uh, providing them a place where they could play and enjoy themselves um, here in Hawthorne. And, and along all of our parks for that matter. After the groundbreaking, construction workers immediately began work on removing the outdated play equipment to make way for the new. For HCTV, I'm Evan Nirani. The new playground at Memorial Park is expected to be completed by late November and the Marine Avenue improvements by early next year. The Senior Citizen Commission, with help from the City of Hawthorne, organized a senior resource fair. Francisco Castillo gives us the details. Golden Quinn came to the city of Hawthorne after hearing about the Senior Resource Fair being held at the St. Joseph's Catholic Church. It's good. It's something that it's needed. The different tables, I view the different tables, and there's diff this information that seniors need to have. The event brought in many organizations such as Metro and Medi-Cal in order to answer any and all questions seniors might have had. We have people that's going to help them with housing. And we're going to also have someone to talk about any type of issues that might be going on in the neighborhood. The idea is to bring resources to the seniors, to show seniors what is available to them. Medical tests were also offered to those in attendance. I think I saw over there someone was getting their blood pressure done. Before the fair ended, Coast Fitness held a small aerobic presentation that gave senior citizens daily workout tips they could do at home. For HCTV, I'm Francisco Castillo. The Senior Citizen Commission holds a meeting every first Wednesday of the month at the City Council Chambers. If you would like more information, call the Hawthorne Senior Center at 310-349-1650. Losing a job is a tragedy for many families, but at the South Bay Workforce Investment Board, finding the next job is key. Evan Norani has a story on how this organization honored residents who are back in the workforce. It's only been eight years since the 2008 recession that left many unemployed with nowhere to turn. And for a father and Hawthorne resident like Leonard Velez, the South Bay Workforce Investment Board, or SIBWIB, was a place he never thought he'd need, up until his company started laying off employees there was a big change in the company where they hired a new chief revenue officer and the chief revenue officer pulled everyone from the sales team about nine guys and girls and he said well guys I'm gonna have to let all of you go just like that job was eliminated Velez immediately turned to Sibwit, a company dedicated to providing employment and job training services to job seekers through the board Velez completed certification programs and is now employed again it gave me that lifeline, that thing that you really wouldn't know about unless if you're, put, you're thrust in a situation where, well, what, what am I going to do? What's going to be my next step? At SIBWIB's annual awards dinner, Velez was among many individuals honored for their perseverance. We haven't had the, um, the, the greatest numbers as far as employment rate, but now our numbers are going up. And because of organizations like the South Bay Workforce Investment Board, which trains people and um, prepares them for all sorts of jobs, our numbers are going up. One of the most exciting things about coming to an event like this is you learn the stories of the people who came to the web, who had been looking for jobs maybe for months, even for years. People who wanted a little bit more training so that they could have a career. They can get it all at the South Bay web. And adults weren't the only ones being honored. Even a young Hawthorne resident who got her first job in high school and is now on her way to college was recognized. Well, it's just a, a motivation. It pushes me now to, to strive for even more better things. I never won anything as big as that. And so to win that, I, it makes me believe and it makes me, you know, have hope for the future. What I learned is that you have to keep going 
And no matter what's thrown at you, you can't lose your focus as to what your purpose is, and that's getting people trained and employed. Sibwave oversees 11 cities in Southern California and has helped over 100,000 residents. For HCTV, I'm Evan Arani. In addition to the services Sibwave provides in person, they recently launched a website with online training and education for businesses and employees. For more information, visit their website at www.southbaytraining.org. Coming up next on City News, we'll show you what college president lived in the city of Hawthorne. Also, we'll show you why these siblings traveled overseas. There's more news ahead. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The El Camino College president is a South Bay native. We head to the campus to learn more about her. In November of 2015, the El Camino Community College District Board of Trustees appointed Dr. Dina Maloney as the sixth superintendent president of the campus. I uh, actually was born in the South Bay. Uh, my family lived here, my grandparents lived here, and um, so I was born here. My parents lived in Hawthorne. Dr. Maloney moved away to the San Gabriel Valley when she was young, but continued to visit the South Bay as family members continued to live in the area. Coming back to the South Bay is sort of like coming home to me. Um, having been here uh, as a young child and spending a lot of time in the summers here. Her family has been part of the college's history. As Dr. Maloney mentioned, her father took classes at El Camino the year it was founded, and now she has become the first woman president of the college. Oh, I'm very proud. I'm honored to be the first woman president. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for women in higher education and many community college presidents are, are, are women, but to be the first one here at El Camino is very special. Though it's not an easy road to become college president, Dr. Maloney says that you can aspire to any position as long as you don't get discouraged and you get on the right path. There's a very optimistic feeling here at El Camino College about the future and that um, we're very focused on the success of our students. We always have been. That's the legacy that we have, and we want to build on that legacy and take the college to the future so that it can help support students and help them achieve their goals. Dr. Maloney says she will continue in the efforts to help more students achieve higher education. We wish Dr. Maloney a long and successful career at El Camino College. For the last two years, Chevrolet and the Manchester United Football Club have sent kids with aspirations to play soccer in England. Francisco Castillo tells us about a set of twins that got to share this opportunity. This is Rakaya, a girl that dreams to one day play soccer professionally, just like her father did. They taught me how to dribble. This is Rakaya's twin brother, Kasim, who shares the same dream of making it big on the field. It was amazing and I lo love the crowd cheering for us. Chevrolet gave the twins and their parents an opportunity to leave Hawthorne and travel to the United Kingdom, where they would meet the Manchester United soccer team for a week's worth of activities. So we've actually identified kids just like Hassam and Rakaya behind me uh, who embody this spirit of play, and we invite them to take part in a once-in-a-lifetime experience. This included a chance to walk out with the team before a game. It was my favorite day of my entire life and I just want to say thank you to Chevrolet. They received an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one practice with the team and also shared laughs with new friends from around the world. We went on the, on the last floor, like on the top floor of the hotel, and then they practiced with us. Maybe the main thing for us is just to have them, to see them interact with other kids from around the world, even with the language barrier. According to their father, Ahmed Azam, as a parent, there is no better feeling than seeing the smile on a child's face as their dream comes true. When I just, you know, walked with them, honestly, I couldn't control my emotion. Uh, I was crying in the beginning. They were just excited to share their experience. Alejandro Grau from Chevrolet mentioned that this program was created so that kids such as Kasim and Rokaya could meet other kids from around the world that share their passion for soccer. For HCTV, I'm Francisco Castillo. If you would like more information on Chevrolet's beautiful possibilities program, go to www.chevroletfc.com. According to Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network, 93% of teens that have been assaulted know they're assaulters. 
Daniel Lindley takes us to a workshop that was aimed at helping prevent sexual assault. Majority of the time, teens hang out at their local teen center for fun and games, but not this time. Today, the Hawthorne Teen Center turned into a workshop in sexual assault prevention. Uh, Resolve to Rise is a, an organization, nonprofit here in our city, that is providing educational uh, workshops and information on sexual assault. Awareness, education, empowerment, and prevention are the four words that gave meaning to the sixth annual Teen Edition Sexual Assault Workshop. The event consisted of announcements, Q&A sessions, as well as few guest speakers. One of the speakers, Yolanda Dunn, is a founder and director of Resolve to Rise. I was sexually assaulted by my father and my second eldest brother and it wasn't until later in my 20s where I first spoke of the abuse in, in 2010 I learned that my daughter was sexually uh, was raped by her half-brothers. The agony that it cost me emotionally, psychologically from the assault that I experienced myself but then watching my daughter go through her journey of healing, it was something that I do not want anyone else to experience. Katie, a brave young girl who I spoke with, tells us the importance of speaking out. This helps me because like I got abused from my father and um, I saved my other little sisters from from getting touched because my older sister had got raped and I'm so glad I reported this because I didn't want to keep on going on with this for the rest of my life. The workshop itself concentrated and narrowed in on four key topics internet safety, environment, boundaries, and identifying red flags. Right. Some of the, the red flags that we talked about was friends that are influencing you to do things that your parents told you not to do. Being in a relationship with someone who's abusive and controlling and trying to manipulate you into doing things, such as suggesting that you send uh, nude pictures of yourself to them. Both the mayor and councilwoman agree that sexual assault prevention starts at home and it's the parents' responsibility to teach their children. Parents must take responsibility for making certain that their children are safe. What I think that teenagers can walk away from this event is that they can truly have fun as teenagers and in their youth and as they grow into young adults, but there are certain things they just have to be careful with so that they'll be able to live a safe uh, life without being victimized by uh, sexual predators. At the end of the day, Everyone behind this workshop wants teens to walk away well-informed and empowered to stand up and prevent sexual assault. I'm Daniel Lindley reporting for HCTV. If you missed this workshop and would like to learn more about the organization, contact Resolve to Rise at 310-973-1091 or visit their website at www.resolvetorise.org. Keep it right here on Channel 22 for these future City News stories. We'll take you to the annual Water Harvest Festival, plus see all the fun at this year's Spooktacular and learn all about the first brewery coming to town. That does it for this edition of City News. Thanks for watching. If you have any story ideas, please call us at 310-349-1630 or email us at hctv at hawthornca.gov. Don't forget you can watch City News online on YouTube by searching Hawthorne Community Television. We'll leave you now with more footage from the National Coffee with the Cop Day. See you next time.